So in 2019 and 2020, it was quite interesting year when it comes to AliExpress and buying some stuff. Because not only the handheld invasion and Pandora Book Jungle, we also had a lot of new different system came out. So I think it's pretty interesting to make this top 10 just to show you a more quick overview from the last two years what kind of system were pretty decent or decent enough to put in this list. So they are based on Pi, they are based on Android and, or, an Android, or just on Pandora's book. Nevertheless, there were quite some different versions out there. Just in this video, we're going to do an overview and top 10. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell, become one of the Wicked family. And let's go with the Wicked Top 10 Retro Android Boxes. Yeah. I think this is one of the consoles that were appearing on AliExpress and maybe on other platforms, I don't know for sure. So this was called the Game Box, and at first it looks pretty cool uh, with its transparent casing, but when you're looking closely you can see it's just basically an orange pie, more like an older version that they're just reusing and putting it together, complete with a kit or like a box, giving it a name and giving it some crappy PlayStation controls like always, always going to get these weird Ucom horrible controllers. And inside the box, it looks like a game system, but in the end, it's just a Pi with an SD card in combination with some controllers. So they were pretty, getting pretty naughty in my opinion, but of course I needed to pick it up just to see what are they made of um, and how good are these systems. It was very quickly that this version was delisted from the AliExpress shops and they replaced it with a very basic version with just a closed white box. A little bit of a bummer in my opinion because I really like this casing. Yeah, okay, it's open for dust and you can damage it uh, very quickly. So nevertheless, I completely understand why they chose it for this. But when you're looking at the performance, the Orange Pi is not really the best choice to go to. But because back in the day, we already had Raspberry Pi 3B+. So the idea itself was pretty cool and naughty at the same time. It got a very nice theme menu, but the Orange Pie it's familiar under the people so far I understand of. But for two dimensional games, it's just fine. But if you want to run PlayStation, for example, it's not powerful enough. So in my opinion, back today you can pick up a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus or 3B for not a lot of money, and that was able to run PlayStation 1 pretty decent. So the Orange Pie was way overpriced, and it was just a quick cash grab in my opinion. I do like it, the casing, so it's more like a collectible item now, but you can do a lot of great things with it if you like two-dimensional games. You can, for example, stick it in an arcade one-up modification, plug and play it, and just use it like this. Okay, so this is a great example how do you want to cover it up and be naughty at the same time. And if you don't understand what I'm meaning with this, they sell this thing like the Pandora's Box 7S. So everybody thinking, hey, Pandora's Box, hey, that is the same stuff like the arcade machine. But no, my fellow friends, this is more like an orange pie with a fancy case. I must say I like the fancy case. Complete with wireless controllers. Yeah, more like the shitty controllers or you can buy them with the wired version. There are quite some different versions out there. But when you take a close look at it, I do like the presentation of this. But like the TV box that I've put on number 10, it's a little bit better because this is a newer version Orange Pie. But it's the same, it's the same stuff. You can basically get yourself an Orange Pie, a Raspberry Pi, get yourself a controller, a power supply, an SD card. Be naughty yourself and you have the same stuff. So this is what you're going to get with the Pandora Box 7S. So okay, it looks very nice in combination with the casing and it has a cooling block and a fan. That is a very positive thing. But when you're looking at this and the specification is not really bad. It's comparable with old TV boxes and old uh, Pandora's box. But here yeah, it's just a retro system that is running on an orange pie. And the biggest thing, problem I'm having with this is that it doesn't support a lot of three dimensional stuff. They sometimes try to add it and be freaking naughty, but when you boot it up, it will run like shit. But the reason why I put this on the number 9 position, uh, it's a newer version of the Orange Pi. It's still underpowered and you can see when you're running on N64 or you want to play some PlayStation 1. I tried some Bloody Roar, you can check out the full review and you will see that it lags big time. So a little bit of a bummer, but I give it a little bit higher number because of the fancy case. Uh, yeah, but again, they're pretty naughty in many ways, including you abusing the Pandora Box name. So the Pandora Treasure, they also call it the Mini Street Arcade. This is a plug and play arcade game system. 
And I must say the Pandora Treasure, I think this thing is was very unique this year because they never made something like this with an on and off switch because I did see some previous models without an on and off switch, yeah, seriously, pretty annoying. But I really like what it is. I kind of really appreciate it that they're making this naughty case and including the option to play some yeah, two-dimensional games. The same story like with the Orange Pi, the old technology inside. Most of them are an old quad-core. Uh, with a Mali 400 inside. Nevertheless, what you're going to get is a little bit underpowered device. It will run the games like PlayStation 1 decent enough to enjoy them, but the high demanding games will run very stuttery and in the end it will not be a very pleasant experience. But still, I can appreciate it them bringing the Pandora's box inside and retro casing. The menu is similar like all the other versions and some of these systems even has a recent and search function. So that is quite interesting in my opinion because those were not available on a lot of Pandora boxes in the same year. What I also find very fascinating that we have a lot of games from the arcade but also 8-bit, 16-bit games. The 8-bit, 16-bit games were a little bit lost in my opinion because there were a handful of them on the system. And no, there is no way of adding games. It is just a general issue with these Pandora boxes in general. So when you're looking at the performance and what you can do with it, it's quite interesting. And the Chinese are not only being naughty, but they are starting to be creative in 2020. It's the time for another package from China. And the reason why, because on number seven, we're going to take a close look at the Retro Quest Super Retro Castle. So this thing comes on a higher place because they put a lot of effort in the system. So if you're looking at it, you would say something that was released by a company back at the day. But no, no, it's not something like that. It was based on a very old main board again. And they come with these Super NES weird looking controllers. And so far I know this, this thing is quite unique. And it was very hard to find on AliExpress back at the day. I really love the quality of the controllers. It's not to be compared with the original, of course, like the Super NES. But when you're looking at the software itself, it's quite naughty and interesting at the same time because it was basically running on retro arc as you can see it supports the full hd output that's something that is not from let's say very common with these devices some of them running on 720p or 480p as you can see booting it up it's going to get some retro arc interface and we're having some interesting titles so this was more like a retro system that could play up to playstation 1 and overall the way how they made it is pretty basic it's just retro arc what you're going to get no fancy menu whatsoever didn't put the extra effort forward so a little bit of bummer but old hardware with the new casing that's what it did a lot in there in china but this time with the casing itself i think it's not bad at all Pressing the reset, it even gives you the option to quick load, quick save. Everything is in an Asian language, so I have no idea uh, what it says. We can, of course, mess around with it and eventually you will find out what it is. But there was also no way of checking how to, let's uh, say, put it on a different language. But okay, that's what you're going to get with this device. It's quite interesting to see all the old stuff running pretty decent. But yeah, old stuff, we can run it on a mobile phone. But again, special casing. I like what they did with this. So that is why I'm going to give this an spot in my number 10 or top 10 wicked video retro game console list all right so in this year they made the magic cube mini game box yeah again a completely different new system when it comes to how it looks and of course how it feels and how it smells yeah because some of them <laughs> smell pretty chemical so far I know you can only buy it with Super NES rip off controls and these things were freaking awful. But what I really like about it, that's therefore that is going to put it in this top 10 list, is that it comes in this very tiny unique casing. And if I can appreciate something, then it is they're making again something custom. Of course it's all based on a kind of an Android or a Linux system. But when you're looking at the menu, there was also some interesting things. The menu itself was similar like a lot of these handhelds I've reviewed, like the PS7000. It's more like a Linux based system that can play a lot of retro stuff. Yeah, we can watch a movie, listen to some music, you can change out the themes, or the similar stuff with the handhelds. But the games are like the same as like all the other versions from the, uh, let's say the 8 bit up to the PlayStation 1. And these systems, even this tiny box, runs the PlayStation 1 pretty decent. So it's a really fun device to see and it's very compact. The casing itself looks a little bit cheap in my opinion. So this device runs on a rock chip. It's quite interesting, especially made PCB in 2020. So when you're looking at it and the specifications, it's not a super powerful chip, but it is powerful enough to run most retro games up to PlayStation 1 that I already mentioned before. So 
I give this a little bit higher ranking in my list with a special chip or better said a special PCB inside. Quite interesting board. Check out the full review if you want to know more. But this is what you're going to get with the Magic Cube. I think where it all started. The 3D Game Box Golden Sky. I was thinking in 2019, it was around the end of the year, they released this game box. The first big flaw this thing had, it didn't have an on and off switch. Oh yeah, they basically missed it up. But they based it on the Pandora's box or Pandora Game 3D software. The main core of the device is as an Android and a special made PCB inside with a fancy box. They take a lot of effort making something unique and it supports a lot of different systems, even up to PSP. And if you're looking at all these Android boxes, or better said, Pandora's box, whatsoever, it's not very common that it runs Sega Dreamcast and PSP, for example. So we're going to get some more high-end stuff. But okay, so the Golden Sky has an option to add games, thanks to the guys of Pandora Tool, so we can add it. It's not very easy to do, but still, it is possible. When it comes to the support of the games, PSP is supported. The same goes like with the Dreamcast stuff, but I can tell you, it doesn't run decent enough to really enjoy some of these games. In general, they're running very choppy. Some are decent enough, but it's just a mixed bag. So they're promising a lot of stuff, and that's for the reason I'm not going to put it higher in the list. It's a fun device to see. I think it's pretty cool. I like the casing, how it looks. But in the end, the support, and as you can see, it glitches out big time. It has a lot of stuttering. So that's, I think, a little bit of a bummer with the G1. It's flawed in many ways. So next up, we're going to get the Pandora Saga 3D. Yes, it's from the brand Datafrog, and I'm guessing there will be in a couple of stores who sell this. So what you're going to get is this plug and play game console. So the casing itself is completely made of plastic and yeah, it has Wi-Fi capabilities for the Naughty Store. So when you're looking inside the device itself, you will see that it runs on the same specs like all the other versions. So what they're just doing is using older specs inside this casing to keep it more like a cost effective thing. But you will end up like the same all the other stuff that we're having a lot of great game consoles out there what i didn't like about it that they only having passing cooling on the cpu and the gpu over here this thing had a lot of memory so that is also very unique most of them have around one gig of memory this one has slightly more if i'm saying it correctly it has just basic 60 gigabyte storage wi-fi capabilities but when it comes to the gameplay itself you will notice that psp runs quite good but not all of the games don't try even but bo don't bother trying the god of war game that doesn't run PlayStation 1 runs pretty good, like Brody Roar, and then 64 is just a mixed bag like always, but it's more like a completely different level in combination with the emulators and of course the modern GPU. And nevertheless, there's a lot of problems with all of these boxes will struggle with, but I must say Cruise in the World didn't run that bad in my opinion. The same comes to Dreamcast, it is not on full speed, but it was playable, and it is something you don't see very often, so therefore I'm going to put it a little bit higher in the list, and yeah, the effort of the cooling, and I don't even want to start about it. Nevertheless, on this number, we're going to put the Pandora Saga 3D Wi-Fi from, in this case, Datafrog. Okay, so next up, it's not really a game console, they sell it like a game console. It's basically a Pandora's box with the capability of having controllers attached to it. And yeah, they just sell it like a game console. You, you can use it like a game console, but it doesn't have a really nice fancy case, just a normal, uh, normal on and off switch. You also, you sometimes use a jumper in it. But nevertheless, yeah, that's the reason why I'm more like a mix back with the game casing. But the reason why it's so high in the list is that this device has so much potential. Yeah, it has the same exactly basic menu, the crappy places to knock off wireless controller. But there is something else that I really liked about it. So to begin with, let's talk about the menu. The menu is more like a menu that I've many, just seen so many times. But they didn't do a lot of improvements here. No, just the same stuff like categories, recent, search, you name it. It's all possible. The emulation itself was not big of an improvement, a minor improvement. Most of them, they're just using the same S905 chipsets. But this was the first mainboard of the Pandora Games 3D series. Finally, we can attach a lot of different controllers, including the Xbox 660. And we are happy about it because we can buy old, let's say, arcade sticks. 
So we are also for the three, four player, we have so many new options when it comes to the gamepad. I think it was pretty cool and it was just a big improvement over all the other versions. But sadly, when you're looking at the specs and when you're looking at the games, there is not a big improvement. I still want to put it a little bit higher in my list because we're having now the support of way better controllers. Because all the other versions I've shown you before only support the Chinese crappy PlayStation 2 or maybe Xbox controllers. You don't want those. They are just ruining your game experience. So therefore, I'm just going to put it a little bit higher in my list and I really enjoyed it playing with and messing around with this also had the option to add new games without a pandori tool it works very easy so and overall it was here and there a minor improvement sadly we didn't get a lot of better performance that we wished for so for the number two i choose the game 3001 the plug and play android stick and the reason why i'm number two is that this was a very unique thing i have never seen something like this before that they have this plug and play stick that can stick in your television and just play some retro games it supported up to playstation 1 and of course came with the crappy playstation 1 controllers i really hate those things but i find it quite interesting with this is that the idea behind it it's just so cool that you just have a stick you plug it in it yeah supports 4k but they mean with this the television 4k television not a 4k signal output so far i know it was 720p correct me if i'm wrong but when you just plug in the dongle in the back here on the USB and just plug and play and you can play. I did notice there were some troubles with the SD card. That is a little bit of a bummer that some of the SD cards can get corrupted due of the bad quality. Okay, so the first thing I did notice with the menu, it looks very similar like a Pandora's box. So they keep ripping off each other. But it has some options like history, you can choose category and you have a search function. Wow, and that is unique having a search function on product like this. So when you're looking at the menu, it looks a little bit choppy. It works not that great in my opinion, but it has some potential. So that is not really bad. Beside the corrupted file error that got going to get constantly because they messed it up, the support of games is quite interesting. MAME up to PlayStation 1, it works very well. PlayStation 1, you will notice that some high demanding games will struggle, but in the end, it's quite interesting to see that they can manage to squeeze everything on a freaking dongle and also having the quick load and quick save function. So when you're looking at this dongle, it's pretty cool in my opinion. So therefore I choose this GameStick 4K on the number 2 position. It's unique, it's something completely different that I've never seen before and it works pretty decent. And for the number one, maybe some of you will be surprised, some of you will not. The Super Console X, yeah. And the reason why is very simple. It's just naughty in many ways. And that's not the reason why it's going to be a number one. But the reason why is just it has so much potential. So basically what they did is grab a TV box and use an ALEC and reconfigure the full thing. And what I find very interesting about it is that we're having so many new options to play games. Sadly, it's all based on the same kind of chipset if you're looking at the Pandora game, 3D and whatsoever. What I do really fancy about this is that you can see that it has a special casing. It, they ripped everything off like the Super NES, Super Console X, yeah the name I think is not that bad to be honest. The casing looks quite basic, fully made of plastic, there is no active cooling, just a very tiny aluminum piece of metal on it here that just needs to be cooling the yeah just needs to be the cooling effect it's running on the s905m it's a mobile version so it's less consuming power but it is also less powerful and this means yeah here it comes so when you take a close look at the gameplay the a bit stuff mame whatsoever run just fine also the mortal kombat 1 2 and 3 titles running very well on mame so when it comes to the box itself it's powerful enough to run all of these games so when you're looking at N64 or the Sega Dreamcast, it did notice some minor glitching or we're having some problems with the game not running perfectly. But in general, I find it very impressive that they're making something like this and it's pretty naughty in many ways. So therefore, I'm choosing the Super Console X to be my personal number one. It's quite interesting to see how far they have come with crappy systems or an Orange Pi or a Raspberry Pi. And yeah, I've seen those too. But nowadays you're just making these custom casings in combination with a specially made modified media center box and or TV box, how you want to call this. And in the end, what you're going to get is this naughty system running on Emu Alec. And yeah, it's quite interesting. You see the power of the device. So yeah, let me know in the comments what do you think of this? What is your number one? Do you agree with my list? And I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell. 
And it would be great to have you in the Wicked family. And I will see you in the next video.